On the morning of September 17, 1991, Tammy Lomax and her two small children were asleep at their apartment complex in Lago Vista, Texas, when she suddenly awoke to a nightmare that every parent fears. Apparently the mother was asleep in bed with her three-year-old son. And she awoke to find that the room was full of heavy smoke <laughs> and heat. Honey, come here. <coughs> Holly! She had another child in the second bedroom. <coughs> Holly! The heat was so intense she couldn't get out the door. The only way out was the small bedroom windows that were approximately 25 to 30 feet above the ground. Help! Apartment manager Gussie McBride had just returned home from her morning walk. I was in my office and I heard someone calling for help. Help! I saw Tammy hanging out the window and with smoke coming out and it like to scared me to death. She was very scared that she wasn't going to get out, and she was really concerned about the little girl because she was in another bedroom. Can you get out? No, don't no, jump. Gonna... She says, I'm going to jump, and I says, no, don't jump. Let me go call in. Hold on. I'm going to go call the fire department. The smoke was really boiling out the window, and it really scared me because I didn't know what I was going to do because I knew it was going to take time for the fire department to get here. Gussie's call for help was relayed to the town's all-volunteer fire department. Logovist Fire Department Structure Fire Logovist away and down drive. 761 is 10-4, en route. The first volunteers to arrive on the scene were EMT Jean Reno and her partner. Oh. I was not prepared for this at all because we thought that it was just going to be a structure fire and we did not know that people were trapped. The fire department's on its way. We're going to get It was a long way to jump and that's why we encouraged her not to try to jump. While the EMTs looked for a ladder, Lago Vista police officer Tony Estes arrived. The lady said she wanted to jump. Don't jump, man. Don't jump. I told her, stay, I'll try to get you out the front. I checked the doorknob. It wasn't hot. It was heavy smoke and heat, very toxic. I could see approximately two to three feet. There was no way I could get in the front of the apartment. I needed to get him out and get him out quick. That's when I thought of my patrol car. Going down, man. Going to me. Going down. Volunteer firefighter Jim Tully got to the scene almost immediately. She was willing to lower the child down to us, but he was putting up a struggle. The building itself was almost to the point of flashover, which basically means that everything in the building was to the extent of becoming so hot where even the air catches on fire. I know if I was that young being held out a two-story window upside down, I'd be pretty scared myself. Come on. There you okay. go. We've got him. All right, we got, We've got him. him. We've got him. All right, we got Take him. Take him down. Take him down. Take him down. Right. Take him down. I told the lady to turn around and hold on to the window and lower herself down, and I would catch him. That's it. We'll catch him. All right. Okay, we got you. Turn loose. Okay. Coming down off the patrol cars when she told me she had another baby that was trapped in another bedroom. 761 PD, we still have people in the fire. I looked up at the window where the other baby was supposed to be and I couldn't see anything. But I really didn't think we'd get the baby out. I didn't think that, that we had time. Well, just come on over here. It was just an awful feeling. I just wanted to hurry up and uh, help get her out. Give me the ladder. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. There she is. She's on the left. See her little hand? Within five minutes of the call, the engine company arrived, led by Captain M.J. Duke. There were several people yelling at me as I got out of the truck. There was a little girl still up in the, the bedroom over to the left. Get her out. Get her out. 
I really don't even know how she was still conscious because the heat and the smoke was so bad. When you have that much smoke in a building where it's starting to come out of the cracks, you know that it's pretty well saturated in there, even down to floor level. I didn't put on self-contained breathing apparatus because I knew the time was real crucial. I was afraid of getting glass on her, so I moved over one window. When I heard the thump, it sounded like something falling off the couch. My heart about dropped because I was afraid that she might have fallen and might not be able to get back up. And I knew there was no way that I could reach her from where I was had she fallen off the couch. See her? I can't see her anywhere. Come here, little girl. Come over to me. All I could do was stand there and wait for him to get Holly out. I actually thought, you know, she's not going to make it. You know, we're over here together and we're going to get out and she's not going to get out. You know, it was... I didn't even want to think about it. Keep trying, MJ. Foam rubber, when it burns, puts out cyanide gas. I know every time I put my head in the window and started calling for it, when I came back out, I was coughing and choking. It was just, it was really thick. Be right in there. All of a sudden, she stood up there in front of me. I got her. Come on. It's okay. She didn't even look like a real child. She looked almost like a baby doll that had a lot of soot on it. It's okay. It's okay. You're all Once right. I got her down below, off the ladder, she stopped breathing. When I first was handed the child, she was in very bad shape. She was lifeless. I was just struck by how hot her body was. Hey, Lydia, wake up, babe. Holly. Holly. You know, her eyes were closed. She was limp. She wouldn't wake up. I didn't know if she was alive or dead. Wake up, Come on. I was just numb. I was just, you know, I was just standing there numb. I was doing a lot of praying. Holly, wake up. Wake up. Wake up, Holly. Come on, Come on Holly. Come on, Holly. Come on, Holly. Within, I would say, five minutes, she did open her eyes. It was an incredible feeling to know that the baby was really breathing. We felt pretty confident that she was going to make it. Being on a volunteer fire department like I am, the only thing that you receive from it is just gratification. I always said if I could ever just save one life, it would make it all worth it, and it truly does. Uh, when I pulled her out, I couldn't have felt any better if I'd been handed a million dollars. Tammy Lomax and her two children were treated and released the same day. According to fire investigators, the blaze was caused by a smoldering cigarette. Two months later, the Lomax family has begun to put the painful memories behind them. I don't know what I would have done if I'd lost Holly. If it wasn't for the fire department and the volunteers and the policemen and everybody, I don't think we would have made it out. They really worked hard and fast. And I'm just grateful to all of them. Her husband, Mike, is also grateful. When I see my kids today, I look and just see how lucky I am. Because, you know, I could not have them out in the yard watching them play. I, you know, I thank God that, that they're safe and well, you know, they're still here. Something good did come from this. The volunteer fireman, Jim Tully, that helped the policeman rescue us, we're real good friends with now, him, his wife, and his little girl. We see each other just about every day. The most important lesson to be learned here is be careful with cigarette smoking, because anything could happen. If there had been a smoke detector in this building, they probably could have gotten out before it turned into a life-threatening situation. I think it's really important to have smoke detectors in your house, apartment, condo, whatever you live in, because it can save your life. When I see my kids today, I just thank God they're my life. I think we're a really lucky family. Really lucky. Next. The first thing I heard when the call came in was a child screaming, oh my God. That sets our blood going. Cut his arm. Yes. 